So my disability is called transverse myelitis. Uh, it's a viral condition that I got when I was 14 months old and it basically affected all of the nerves in a section across my spine. Uh, one day I was running around the kitchen table at night and everything was fine. Um, I collapsed and you know just didn't really think anything of it. Mum and Dad picked me up, brushed me off, gave me dinner, had a bath, went to bed and then the following morning um, mum hadn't heard from me and came into my bedroom and I was like a rag doll. I couldn't cry, I couldn't talk, I couldn't move any part of my body and uh, got rushed into hospital and originally they thought it was something called Guillain-Barre syndrome which you make a full recovery from and further tests and we found out that it was actually transverse myelitis and that the nerve damage was permanent so uh, originally I was permanently in a chair I was unable to walk or use my legs at all had no sensation no feeling in them whatsoever and uh, and then gradually with physiotherapy um, and some healing I got the feeling back slightly and was able to train myself to walk again. Horses have always been a massive part of my life. I was brought up here on the family farm. Um, my mum used to ride uh, and she was really heavily involved with horses from a very young age, as was my great granddad. And so I think really it was kind of bred into me, but I just loved being outside. I loved being around the horses every day. Um, I loved getting to know their individual characters and I loved riding. And my parents were never pushy parents. They encouraged me to do lots of other things. Uh, so I swam, went to brownies, I played the violin and the piano, did lots of other normal things and horses were always there for me, it was always my biggest passion and everything else kind of fell away but riding was always there and it was always something that I really really wanted to do. I can't actually remember the first time I sat on a horse because I think I was younger than two years old. Uh, my mum had a basket saddle and so I used to sit on one of the school ponies and go for a, a lead around the yard in my basket saddle and I had like a, a drink in one hand and a lollipop in the other. <laughs> Um, but we didn't really have access to a suitable horse or pony and then my physio ended up calling my mum because I kept nagging her that I wanted more regular riding sessions and that's when she told my mum and dad about the Riding for the Disabled Association and just getting on and be able to do something that I'd always wanted to do it was kind of like you know finally this is happening for me finally I can you know ride every week and, and begin to progress. It felt amazing to be able to get on a horse and, and do something normal if you like and do things that other able-bodied people could do and you know I was still very limited with my ability of walking and um, I can't really get far on my legs so to be able to get on a horse and be able to trot and canter around was such an amazing feeling for me and it's kind of like a bit of freedom and um, you know get the wind in your hair and yeah it's such an incredible feeling and I still get that now. it was the summer of Sydney 2000 and it was the first time that the Paralympics had been televised and that's when I saw Paralympic dressage for the first time and I was completely bowled over I just loved how magical it looked and I just thought well there's these disabled riders that are out there doing this and making these horses dance and they're like me so there's absolutely no reason why I can't do that and so I said to my parents that one day I wanted to win a Paralympic gold medal and that was my dream set in stone. It is strange now life is getting slightly more back to normality. My parents are the best parents that I could ever ever wish for and I, I feel so lucky that they brought me up in such a positive way and I think you know there's lots of people out there that could feel sorry for themselves in my situation you know I'm not able-bodied I can't get up and run around and do normal things that that people can do but you know they brought me up with the philosophy that I can do absolutely anything I want to do it may take me a little bit longer 
it may not be in the conventional way but it'll be in the Natasha way and so I've always had a really really strong positive mental attitude and and that all stems from my parents and my upbringing and they've always given me so many opportunities um I would say I'm spoiled but I'm not spoiled rotten I've had to work hard for what I've wanted and I appreciate absolutely everything that they've given to me and you know I am lucky that I'm an only child so I have got their kind of undivided attention if you like but you know they are so incredibly proud of everything that I've achieved but I'm incredibly proud that I've been able to have this journey with them and have them you know being such an amazing inspiration and positive influence on my life and there's no way that I would be here without them I, I couldn't do what I do without them you know from a daily basis to, to being at an international competition they, they give me so so many opportunities and, and so much passion and so much hard work that yeah I'm, I'm literally the luckiest girl in the world yeah that was really good that's what you need to do in your test and then do that over that side Take her into the wash down. Yeah, please. I feel really lucky the fact that I grew up with my disability so I don't know what it's like to be able-bodied I contracted my virus when I was 14 months old so I've been brought up this way you know walking the way that I do is normal for me and so therefore when I learned to ride I learned to ride in a style that was normal for me so I'm pretty much useless from my hips down when I'm on a horse so my legs just hang um, and they just go with the movement of the horse so in a video you might see them moving that that's not me that's completely involuntary movement and uh, and so I have to train the horses to different aids so I'm very very reliant on my voice and um, you know that's a really important aid for me that I can use and I can use that in the competition as well so I train them to the smallest of noises or words so they know exactly what I'm asking so just like a simple they know that I want them to go more forward or you know a, a little like trot under my under my voice you know they they know exactly what I mean and so yes I do have to have an incredibly strong core I have to have a pretty good balance I have a, a bar that goes over the front of my saddle that I can grab onto if I need to. Um, I call it my holy crap strap so that uh, if I'm thinking oh my god I can just grab onto it if I need it and that is really good for reassurance uh, or if I'm doing my uh, medium trots or extended canter when you know it's a big movement to sit to I can just grab onto that and know that I'm a little bit more secure. Um, but I had a bit of an accident when I was eight or nine and my foot got stuck in a stirrup as I was falling off and because of my lack of sensation I, I couldn't do anything about it and I got dragged and I know it can happen to able-bodied people but it's even more dangerous for, for myself and so from that point on we decided to take the stirrups away and so if I do have an accident, if I do fall, it's a clean fall and I'm less likely to be in danger. You know, loads of able-bodied riders dread a session without stirrups, but that's really made me into a, a stronger rider.
At the end of the day, we're not riding machines, we're riding animals. I'm sitting on nearly three quarters of a ton of animal with its own thoughts, its own feelings, its own mind. Um, and you know, if they want to go or if they want to buck or if they want to do something, they're, they're gonna do it. And unfortunately I had a, an accident at the World Championships in uh, 2018. Uh, I had two really, really amazing days of competition. I'd won two silver medals on a horse that I'd only been riding nine months and I was blown away by what we'd achieved in that short space of time. And she was an amazing mare. We had such a great connection and we'd had an unbelievable year competition wise and she had a fab temperament. And on the final day in the freestyle, um, she was acting quite uncharacteristic. She was spooking, which she never did. And, um, and we went into the arena, performed the first two movements of our freestyle test and something happened and to this day I, I don't know what it was and she let out a massive fly buck and I came toppling off um, in front of the world stage. Um, I think it dented my ego more than anything. Um, I definitely left my mark on the arena. Um, but yeah, it, uh, you know, it just goes to show it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've achieved. You know, horses can certainly bring you back down to earth with a bump. And, you know, it's just part and parcel of, of the sport. You can't be scared of falling off. You can't be scared of accidents every time you get on. You know, it's, yeah, it's just one of those things. In 2017, I had a pretty awful year horse-wise. Um, I lost JP, which was totally heartbreaking. Um, my second horse that was meant to take over from JP went lame. Um, and so I, I just had the worst year horse-wise ever. And then in the Europeans that year, I was asked to commentate and it was something that I'd never done before. And uh, I went into it and I, I didn't really know if I was going to be any good at it, but I love talking. And, uh, and I had so much fun. I had the best time. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And it opened up so many doors for me that I never would have imagined that I would have done. You know, I came into this hoping to, to win a gold medal and now to be commentating on dressage is just amazing. And, you know, that's then opened up other doors and, you know, I've presented the FEI awards now and from doing the Europeans and commentating on para, I then uh, got asked to commentate on the World Cup dressage series. I love going away. I love watching the sport that I love and, yeah, to talk about it is is a real bonus. And she totally smashed it with a, an awesome 78% test. I think the thing that I would love that I haven't yet achieved is to be Paralympic, European and World Champion all at the same time on the same horse. And I was really close to that after London. I was Paralympic Champion from London 2012. I was European Champion in 2013. And I went into the World Championships in 2014, the one to beat. Um, and I was probably too obsessed with winning that gold medal and it all went horribly wrong for me. Um, I went in way too gung-ho into my test and JP got scared and he had three massive spooks that cost me the gold medal and I ended up winning the silver and I couldn't have been more upset and that sounds really really awful because I should have been over the moon with a silver medal but to me at the time I, I'd lost the gold and there was nothing more devastating than that for me at the time but it's probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me. I went away and had a, a long hard think about what I was doing and where I was going and what I wanted and so I started working with with, uh, Kate Goodger, a different sports psychologist, and she completely changed my perspective around and gave me a bit of a reality check. And she basically said that, you know, all, all you can do is your best in the circumstances that you are given. You know, you can't control the judges. You can't control the weather. You can't control what the crowd are, are going to do. All you can control is what you are doing and how you are influencing that horse. And had I have thought about things that way, 
I would have won that gold medal in 2014 and I would have achieved my dream of being Paralympic World and European champion. I have no idea if Lottie will be the horse that will take me to be able to win those three championships. All I do know is I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure that we achieve everything that we can. But I'm really, really still very new in our partnership together. And so going into Tokyo, you know, I'll probably be one of the, the newest partnerships in my classification grade. I'm competing against really established competitors, really established horses. Um, so I don't know if it will happen in Tokyo, but I, I do think it will happen in, in the future if I can get all of the ingredients together on the day.